Hi everyone and welcome to another super exciting edition of C4. Now before we carry on, let's take a look at some of the greatest moments from Ab's time on the show. Yay! Anyway, let's move to our left and meet the first team. Hello, John Artman. Hello, Rob. Did you eat too much for lunch today? I did eat too much for lunch I today. How so. did you know? Because you burped on me before the show. Yes, I did. Anyway, let's move over to Shalmar. Hello. Hi, Rob. How are you? Pretty good. What's wrong with you? Have you got throat cancer? <laughs> yeah, I'm being overworked. Oh, dear. OK, I'm sure it's fascinating work as well. Anyway, let's move over to the right where we have our usual Mr. Stuart Wiggin. Hello. Hello. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Why do you look so jolly? Because you're back. I thought so, that any reason to be jolly. And also we have the delightful young man, Joe Ho Young. Hello. Hello, I'm Ho Young and I'm a girl. What's wrong with your voice today? Are you sick? <coughs> Not feeling well today, got a cold. Mentally sick, okay. Anyway, let's move on to the first story, please. What are these brutal pictures of? Does anyone want to buzz in and tell me? Hold on, I, it, Wigan was the first one to come in, but John Artman seems to have notes on his table. What are those notes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are notes for this show, they're not for, they're not for any, anything He's else. He's totally missed the point of a quiz show. On a quiz show, you don't bring notes on. Shalmar, please deliver those notes to me. I feel like I'm in school. Yeah. Oh, well, you wouldn't know, you've never been, you're Texan. So. Okay. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, let's go over to you then. So, yeah. um, <laughs> these are piranha fish. They are indeed piranhas, and uh, what do you know about piranhas? They are, they are flesh eaters. <laughs> they are indeed <laughs> flesh eaters. Like Joe Ho Young here. Oh, a fat flesh, e a flesh a eater. A flesh eater. Okay, she takes her clothes and, off and then eats And these people. were found, actually, I don't know, where were these found? Um, I think this is found in Guangxi okay. Zhuang Anonymous Region. No, no, it's not Anonymous Region. <laughs> we have to be very clear politically. It's uh, Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. I do want to mention that real quick that piranhas don't, don't usually uh, attack people or, or other things necessarily. In, uh, in, in their environment, unless they've had very, very little to eat. And that's when you see like these feeding frenzies. Okay. Okay. This isn't their natural environment, though, it is it? It is not indeed. These piranhas mm. have actually been dumped in uh, the autonomous region lake, and uh, they shouldn't be there. Um, has anyone ever seen the film Piranha 3D? No. Okay, it's a film in 3D about piranhas. But <laughs> the great thing about that film is it features these women in bikinis with giant boobs. I've seen and the boobs come out of the screen in 3D. But do you know what's even better? The sequel is called Piranha 3 Double D. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. Witty. You were, weren't you? Yeah. But I got there first. You did. Okay, uh, have you ever been bitten by a piranha, John Artman? No, actually, but there was one time that when I was living in Miami, I was, I was fishing <laughs> off of a pier yeah. and I caught a barracuda. And a bar barracuda wow. is like a long version of a piranha, and it was it was very scary. So why were you fishing? Were you too poor to buy food? No, no, no fishing's fun. Did you oh. throw it back? Uh, yeah, I had to, but it was but it was really difficult because yeah. they have really sharp teeth. Yeah. What did you do when you got it out? Did you beat the crap out of it and then throw it back? No, no, no. Just just took it by its head and took took the hook out as quickly. You as I truly could. are the bravest man on that side of the table. <laughs> okay, uh, Stuart Wiggin, you've no, been bitten by a beast before. No, haven't I haven't been bitten, but I, w I went scuba diving in the sea and uh, Ooh, la -di -da. yeah, I cut my knee. And <laughs> on, some, on some coral, yeah. but it was quite—it was quite a big cut. And then seconds later, there was a sea snake swimming around, and they are deadly. It Is came after you because of the deadly. blood. Well, I assume it okay. must. So you put you two and two bravely together. cut himself on some coral. What a war hero! We I was have so on. scared. I got back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Wigan. Okay, uh, Shalmar, I believe that you were bitten by a lion. Uh, no, actually it was a cat. Okay, and what <laughs> happened with this cat? What did you do to deserve to be bitten? I was trying to give it a bath, and did cats are afraid of water. Did you try to kiss it or something? Uh, no, I do that every day. He'll, he's used to it. Oh, okay. Aww. She's a cat molester. Wonderful. Okay, and uh, her young, mm. uh, I've got something here about you being bitten by uh, a beast? Um, actually, no. Okay, well, my <laughs> research is incorrect. Anyway, apparently, people in the uh, Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region have been offered £100 per fish by the local government if they catch them. Uh, Artman, would you go piranha hunting for £100? Yes, definitely. I think that's, that, that, that's an easy answer. That's 1,000 kwai. 1,000 renminbi 1, per 1, fish. 1,000 Chinese yuan. That's, that's per fish. Yeah, per fish, I think. That sounds, sounds like a great deal. That's I mean, a good I deal. think that y y obviously piranhas are dangerous. They but are but indeed. But it's pretty easy to protect. But to yourself. be perfectly honest, like in my office, the Chinese staff, if they caught three fish, they would out earn their monthly salary. So uh, <laughs> we should send some Chinese people. What, what's your monthly salary? Why do I have to share that with you? You don't have to. It's just a Chinese fish. style question. <laughs> anyway, let us move on to the next story, please. Okay, what is uh, what are we looking at now? Uh, 
That was literally at the same time. But Dead because, heat. Because I'm a gentleman, I will ask John Artman. Thank you. I, I buzzed again. You did indeed, which is uh, stupid. So, so these these are pyramids yeah. uh, that are underneath underneath the bridge. And I think that they're in, in Guangzhou. Is that is that correct? Uh, and let me check my notes. Yes, it is. Yes, uh, you took you took mine. Um, and so and so basically, these these it's speculated mm -hmm. that these are used to to prevent people from sleeping underneath these bridges. When you say speculated, John Artman, are there some other potential reasons why these tiny concrete pyramids might have appeared? Uh, it, other speculation has said that it could be to prevent pedestrians from walking through. Uh, the, the the reason I say speculation is that actually not very the, the government. Hasn't come yeah. out with him. Uh, I have finger. to say, there's a picture. Let's take a look at the picture of the man walking, walking through, through the pyramids. So they haven't done a particularly good job of stopping pedestrians. I think it's to stop cars turning. <laughs> Possibly so. Now, what do you do, Shalmar, yeah. when you see homeless people? I walk around them. Okay, do you ever kick them? No. Do you ever buy a burger and eat it in front of them and then run away? <laughs> no. Okay, I have to say, you've got a very cruel face, if so I think maybe you do that to people. If these pyramids yes. are to prevent homeless people from sleeping, there's, a, there's an easy way to prevent that problem. What's Put that? down a piece of wood. Yeah. Oh, you mean game. homeless people, how to actually sleep there? Yeah. You've never been homeless. No, never. Have you? Well, I okay. think I have actually in California once, but I got arrested for it. Uh, actually, I, I, I was homeless, but I only pretended to be homeless. But that's a different issue. No, actually, I think that, oh, that in, some ways, in some ways, in some ways, this would make sense. I think um, because it would be difficult to lie down, and especially if you are if you are a homeless person, you're, if you're a real homeless person, not a beggar, a real homeless person, more than likely you'd be carrying a lot of stuff with you, and so it'd be difficult. They to own to a find lot, do they? Real homeless people. They, they they carry they carry their their homes and their backs usually. Yeah. Okay, so kettles, washing machines, sure. all microwaves. Well, all that kind but of stuff. we don't know what these are actually for, do we? we? Okay, well let's just be clear so that this doesn't get censored out by the authorities. We don't actually know for sure why these little pyramids have appeared. What about you, Joe Her Young? If you were homeless, where would you sleep? McDonald's. Stupid. Okay. <laughs> uh, what about you, uh, Shalmar? If you happen to find yourself homeless one day, uh, what would you do? I know I'd spend the night on a bench. On a bench, eh? Okay. So they probably have to put more spikes on benches. They, which they, which they've done already. Idea. <laughs> what spikes on benches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they 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 copied a German design that was just supposed to be like a like a uh, an example of what could happen. And then and then a city in China, they actually just basically copied that. It originally was meant to be art. Yeah. And and a, a park in a Chinese city, I forget where, they actually used that where like you you had to press a button or like put money in. I can't remember. Oh, and to make the spikes get, go away. And then well, you only happens? get like five minutes. What happens if you sit there for more than five minutes? Do you actually get a warning like the spikes are coming up? Or no, you I just think get impaled. Well, no, what happens is... Because you could literally lose a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Uh, no, they just come up slowly. <laughs> like this. Slowly piercing the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's marvellous. Anyway, I would just like to say if I was homeless, I would sleep in a cow like Rob Roy. I'd anyway. sleep in an airport. What? Thanks for asking. Okay. <laughs> oh, I would okay. sleep underneath the bridge. Wiggins feel, feeling all left out. Let's have a little flirty conversation. Where would you sleep, eh? Not in my bed. An airport. Okay, thanks for that. Anyway, let's move on to the next story, please. John Artman has got all excited. What has happened here, John? Uh, it's a naked man. And well, it's a naked man. Who it's has a sculpture. Been, uh, oh, excuse mm -hmm. me. I'll, I'll revise that statement if you don't mind. Uh, it's it's a sculpture uh, by he Michael. He sounds so bitchy today. What is it? John? <laughs> it's a wonderful sculpture <laughs> of David by Michelangelo. Okay, but but, but God, let's his, but we're never going to get to the, the private end of this. parts have been um, censored. Okay, that is very Burned true. Out. I know. Okay, that's what he said. Okay, anyway, uh, who censored it out? Uh, John Artman, you're getting a bit moody. I am, actually. Uh, CCTV. Okay, CC which channel on CCTV? 13. Y you <laughs> looked at the picture. Well done. Okay, now, does anyone know why CCTV edited out David's balls? No. And the rest of him? I, I think that there, there, there's a reasonable explanation if you yes. think about traditional Chinese values and you don't want to offend people. You know, showing showing someone's you know cock and balls could be offensive. <laughs> but they uncensored it three hours later. So do you think that this was just one man who was getting a bit oversensitive? Yeah, he's one person whose editorial standards are a bit. Uh, Okay, well that, that often happens, like even in our office sometimes people say, oh this is okay, this is not okay, and then they change their minds two minutes do later. You know so that, do you know that your face has been censored for most of this show? Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the uh, cock and balls have been censored as well. <laughs> David had his <laughs> uh, edited out. Um, Hei Young, how do you feel when you see a cock <laughs> on, a, on, a, on, a, on a statue? 
<laughs> when you see a nude statue, that's, exactly. what, that's Thank what he you. means. Thank you so much, Stuart. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, if it's Michelangelo's masterpiece, I wouldn't mind. What's wrong with you? It's, she's getting all like, <laughs> she's getting all emotional. She's getting all excited. <laughs> so my penis is a big one. I go, oh, yeah. Renaissance uh, art. Yeah, yeah. It's very common. Renaissance mm. cock. Okay. <laughs> Oh actually, actually, the, uh, the 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 internet users of China, their reaction to this was really funny. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of different internet memes going on where they'll take like a Renaissance picture mm -hmm. of, of a nude of a, a Renaissance nude, and they'll Photoshop in some clothes, and it's yeah. actually really well done. I have to say. Yeah, I've seen a few of those. Uh, Shama, like in China, do you have a history of having naked statues? Uh, no, we don't. We don't have a history of many statues. Okay, they were probably destroyed Although in the mo 60s. Although Chinese modern art, there's quite a lot of na uh, naked, well, nude sculptures mm -hmm. in Chinese modern art. Um, but also, I remember we did a story on C4 a while ago about some bamboo forest in Chongqing where they had the, the naked Zhang Ziyi with the yeah. giant boobs, and nobody really complained about that. So uh, oh, that's true. I didn't. Um, okay. Anyway, Stuart, I was just wondering uh, if they were to make a naked statue of you, would you be offended? It depends how they how. Concrete. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, let's ask John Artman, because he's been a bit quiet for 30 seconds. Uh, John, if they made a naked statue of you, we've already had a statue of you on the toilet. Yeah, I love that statue, by the way. But be a real uh, if we had a naked concrete statue of you outside CRI, how would you feel? Um, I think that it would probably be a little bit too much. If it was proportional, you'd be offended, obviously. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, if it, it showed me in a very positive concrete. light. But at the same time, you know, having all of my coworkers walk walk past a naked picture of me every morning and, and, and every evening, that would be kind of uncomfortable. OK, you think it would be awkward? It would be slightly awkward, yes. OK, well, let's move on. We shan't do it. And uh, let's move on to the final story of the day. Okay, just one photo for this uh, story. You can see a woman holding something. Does anyone want to buzz in and tell me what she's holding? holding. Hmm. She's holding a necklace. She is indeed. Stu uh, applause for Stuart Wiggin for being <laughs> the Sherlock Holmes of C4. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you now, Stuart Wiggin. How? Stop it now. You're acting like a simpleton. Okay, we'll send you to the special school. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do it. Stop. <laughs> do it. Let's go. How much would the necklace worth? <laughs> 6,800 renminbi. Wow, how much is that in English pounds? 680 pounds. Give or take. Um, okay, and uh, what was the actual story, Xiaoma? Well, she was uh, cycling along, I guess. Yes. And um, there was this burglar that ran past her, and she just took off her heels and took after him. Because he took her necklace. Yeah. Okay, that's right. And as you can see from the uh, picture there, she actually took a photo on her mobile phone uh, of the thief. And as you After can see, after she beat him up. Also, she's she ripped didn't his beat him up. She didn't. She chased him down. She, yeah, she chased and him. And he's but just she, exhausted. She's so good at running that she actually made him really oh, tired, which is why him. he looks tired. Also, she has ripped his shirt she off and probably tried to rape him. Do you him. know what she said? She what said, did she say? She doesn't run for nothing. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> glad, glad we got that little joke in there. Um, now, uh, Stuart Wiggin, yeah. uh, what would you do? Because you have uh, an incredibly rich other half, don't you? She's fairly well off. Loaded, okay. What would you do if some burglar ran past and stole her necklace? Would you give pursuit? I'd have to give, I'd have to give chase. All right, but would you run super slowly so that you <laughs> knew you would never reach him? It depends how big the guy was. Because I've got to say, you don't look like yeah, you're I'm in like I'm not particularly packing form. much heat here. Okay. But no, but you look like a good sprinter. Yes, I am, but, but she doesn't know that, so... You know, <laughs> You've never had to sprint before. And you won't be sprint watching Sprint away this. from her. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, Shalmar, what would you do if a thief was running towards you? He'd stolen something from, I don't know, Stuart Wiggin, and um. ran towards you. Would you try to stop him, or would you just uh, dive into the corner? It depends on the speed that he, he was coming at me. OK. What about a child thief? Because I've noticed in China there's lots of child pickpockets. If you saw a child pickpocket running towards you, what would you do? I'd strangle him. Stra to death? <laughs> no, not to death, but, you know, just Pretty to close. <laughs> just, just put him in a chokehold until he was unconscious. Good. Child <laughs> abuse. We like that. Child thieves are not just, you know, they're not just... They're not just for Christmas, they're for life. <laughs> <laughs> OK. That's, that's a phenomenon, not just... Uh, it happens everywhere yes. in the world. Yeah. Have you ever stolen anything? Though? Um, I have. Uh, I've had something stolen from me, but we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the next topic. No, I've never stolen anything. What about you, Stuart Wiggin? You used to have a. a, a no, I've life never. Of crime. No, I've never stolen anything. Okay, could lose your job here if we go on anymore. Uh, Joe Ho Young, I heard that you at kindergarten were quite the little thief. <laughs> well, this only happened once ever in my whole life. Yes because my classmate had these really pretty stickers. Yeah, stickers, eh? Good. Yeah, they're like, it means a lot to a little child. Yeah, and so I 
kind of took one. Aww. Took one Aww. sticker. God. Dear God, <laughs> I don't, I I don't want to work for with her. this girl anymore. Well, you did homework for yeah, her. Yeah. Anything else? So she was cheating and you stole her stickers. <laughs> <laughs> this is, where well, did this happen in China? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, the moral <laughs> corruption of the youth. John Hartman, you've got the face of a thief. What have you taken? Uh, I think I stole some money from my parents when I was like four years old. Oh. Oh. Right. What it's did like you buy like at the like age of 50, four? Like 50 cents, I don't know. Oh, okay. What did you buy at remember. the age of four? I don't think I bought anything. I was like, I'm going to steal some money. <laughs> He's gone back to special school. <laughs> okay, and Shalmar, finally, uh, you uh, have probably stolen something, haven't you? Um, I heard that you stole men. No, not really men, more like boys, actually. <laughs> you stole what? Pedophile. Okay, anyway. Uh, Child let's kidnapper. Well, okay. <laughs> I wonder how much money she got for them. Anyway, uh, before we wrap up, I do want to find out, have you ever had anything stolen from you, Stuart Wigan? Yeah, I had a chain stolen from me, a nice chain. Did your girlfriend used to keep you chained up at home? <laughs> no, no, it was my mum gave it to me. Your mum used to keep you chained up at home? No, she gave it to me. Turning gave into a me. sick and yeah. sordid story, I tell you. Uh, hey, young, what about you? Got my iPhone. Oh, stolen. the one with all the naked photos on. Yes, I remember that. Uh, John Altman, what about you? Yeah, actually, I, I've had uh, batteries stolen out of my electric bike here in Beijing. That is awful. Okay, twice. but let's let's clarify. Not all people in Beijing are thieves. Most people are nice. Well, and the thing is, that it happened twice. I, so I've had an electric so battery my, stolen. My too. batteries, my batteries were stolen partly because of my own fault, not lo locking it properly. Stupid. And then I went to buy new batteries, which cost uh, one thousand, more than one thousand renminbi. If you caught a problem, then, you'd pay for it. And then, not an hour after I had bought those, those new batteries were stolen. What a slap in the face. Uh, before we cry, let's move on to Shao Ma. Have you had anything stolen? Yeah, just like Phyllis, I had my... Naked uh, photos? No, <laughs> my cell phone stolen. Okay, did it have any naked photos on it? Uh, not that I recall. If it did, I would have stolen it. Anyway, uh, the only thing I've had stolen working at CRI here is my dignity. Anyway, uh, let's uh, quickly wrap it up there. I think that's just about enough. So uh, this week's prize is actually the pornographic novel Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, I would give you a reading from it, but then we would be uh, totally cut out. So uh, I've got to say, Shao Ma, who steals men and children, I think you would probably be most in need of this. You'll enjoy some of the stories. All right, thank okay, you. It's got a lot about BJs in it. It's that's third, Beijing. It's a third copy. <laughs> it probably yeah, is. Yeah, I need actually volume three. Okay, well, the, <laughs> at least you can use that one because the pages aren't stuck together yet. Anyway, uh, don't forget, uh, check down below because we have uh, the Weibo page and also the email address if you have something to say, indeed, <laughs> down below. Aren't had fun? Yes. Good stuff. Okay, cock and balls. Uh, what about you, Shalma? Yeah. You've won okay. porn, so you're obviously happy. Uh, Joe Ho Young, young man, how are you? I'm a girl and I'm fine. Okay, you don't look fine, you look sick. And uh, finally, Stuart Wiggin? I've had a good time and I hope Joe Ho Young gets better soon. Did Thank you? you. Oh, shut up. Did you have more <laughs> fun than you had on the Abishan shows? Equal amounts. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, he means infinitely more. Anyway, I think that's just about it for now, so let's say uh, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.